Sit back, relax, and enjoy the EHS radio show on Siemens FM is on the air. Thank you. Yes, I'm your host, David Walker. Thank you. Thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you, folks. My, my guest today was one of the first people I consulted with when I decided to make the EHS radio show a reality and not just a dream or an idea. Her gift of communicating and her vision of outcomes, along with her experience, make her one of the most enjoyable and easy to talk to people I am fortunate enough to call my colleague. Listeners from around the world, please join me with a big round of applause for our guest today, Jacqueline Carr. Hi, Jackie. Hello, David. Thank you very much for that lovely introduction. Well, I meant it. I meant every bit of it. You know, our, our show is usually pretty short. I'm within a 15, 20 minute time frame. So well, let's just get right into it. You didn't start your career at Siemens. And I, I, you know, we've had a few conversations throughout the last couple of years, but, but I will say that we're very glad you found a home here. So for our listening audience from around the world today, please tell us where it all started for you, how it progressed, and how it landed here at Siemens and what your current role has turned into today. Well, David, thank you. It's a bit of a long story, but uh, since we don't have so much time, I will try and keep it short. Around 20 years ago, after university, I left Scotland, which is my, my home country, to travel and work in Asia. I ended up spending about three years in Taiwan, a year in India, and about 12 years in Australia until I finally arrived in Germany five years ago. But my my first proper introduction to EHS was through developing and delivering workplace training and inductions, moving on to EHS recruitment and consulting, and eventually into HSEQ management in construction, rail and utilities industries. But before moving to Germany, I was a senior occupational health and safety and wellbeing consultant at Swinburne University in Melbourne. So when I arrived at Siemens in Munich in 2019, um, I joined the P&O EHS safety team initially as a maternity leave cover. So I was really happy to be introduced to Siemens and um, uh, enter the safety team. But I was even more happier when um, I got to stay here as a permanent member of the team. And my role has since evolved over the years, most of which has been during the pandemic. But the main areas I take care of are in health and safety communications and engagement, the health and safety learning and development uh, activities, and also the Healthy and Safe at Siemens program. But I also support my team and others across our ecosystem, and I really enjoy the variety and flexibility of my role and the ability to connect with people around the globe like yourself, David. Uh, that's a, That was really good. I, how did you get all that in in just a few short minutes? Because that, that is a... That is a full <laughs> career already. That is fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. You know, the emphasis on our show is always safety and health and, and how it helps people. And we know it's really important. But for a lot of our guests and for myself, there there have been certain events or triggers or things that have happened that always live with you and always drive you and always keep you focused And we call that the aha moment on this show. Have you had an aha moment or a series of events, aha moments that have impacted your EHS vision that just drives you to do what's best for our colleagues? And if you have, would you share it with us? Yeah, thanks, David. Well, I still get aha moments, so uh, it's difficult to pin one or two down, but I would say that a number of factors and experiences over my working life have formed what EHS means for me. So the working environments in Scotland, India, Taiwan, Australia, Germany are all really different, Um, not just the industries I was working in, but the cultures. But what they all had in common was that no one was coming to work to get ill or hurt. So no one was coming to to work in order to, you know, leave home and have to go to the hospital or anything like that. So what I observed and experienced 
or my aha moment was that workplace culture and leadership had a huge impact on health, safety and well-being. If you've ever had a bad manager in your life, you know what a difference that makes uh, compared to having a really good manager. And I think once I had a really excellent manager and I saw the difference that that made to everybody, not just me, people in the team, the work that we did, um, how we collaborated, I really saw what good looked like. And I wanted to see that in all of my workplaces after that. So seeing that, uh, this is very much in the hands of the employers to influence these factors. And I realised the value that can be created through supporting and working with leadership to advance the health and safety of work. Yeah, that's excellent. Uh, that's 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 a key. You know, we, we say it a lot. We, we emphasize that anyone in the environmental health and safety world is starts with leadership. But that, I think you you worded that very well. Thank you for that explanation. Jackie, would you would you agree that I know you would agree that real, timely, relevant and easy to use communication is one is a key driver that has empowered Siemens and bringing together our EHS community around the world. And in addition to educating all the levels of the organization about a safe and healthy workplace, give me your perspective on why encompassing communication into the EHS team has been such a key driver to bring us all together and more or less unify us across the globe. Yeah, well, um, you know, from the pandemic over the past few years that communication has been so important, uh, not just to understand what was happening, but how quickly we needed to learn things and share things. So uh, being prepared and able to adapt to the changing circumstances that we have today makes a huge impact to the health and safety of our people. Staying informed, learning about emerging risks and technologies, you know, opportunities that that present themselves as well as improving our skills and sharing best practices is really important in a company such as Siemens, which is so huge and globally relevant. The impact and footprint that Siemens has is huge. We do this at the global level and at local levels through awareness campaigns, creating platforms for best practice sharing, webinars, knowledge boards, podcasts like this one which is uh, my number one favorite podcast <laughs> and you. another activity these are just great examples as well of proactive activities that we can track along with reactive activities such as investigations to get a better picture of where we are in our health and safety journey at Siemens communication consultation and training are all integral parts of any EHS management system. They're, they're legal requirements in a lot of countries, but but to do it effectively and have the right tools and media to do it, uh, we're really fortunate at Siemens that, that we've got the ability to do this really well. And I think we're very fortunate that the that the team, the, the operations team and the, the uh, senior management team and, and, and even the, the board to, to a degree has recognized that communications is a key driver for for everything and EHS falls into that bucket of everything to to get the message across and how we communicate and the way we put our verbal communications and our written communications and the way we display our 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 product our work product is just it's been so instrumental in, in advancing the environmental health and safety world within Siemens and you know Jackie, I'll have to tell you that it stepped up a notch when you came on the team and, and you were noticed and it was it, it is true. And and I'm telling you, not just because you're my guest, but it, it took a step forward and it complimented. Oh. Well, it complimented everything that's going on in the countries, you know, in the in the US we have an outstanding communications team. But it you're very, you're very kind, team. David. You really well, it's true. <laughs> it's true, you know. It's true. Yeah, so, but you know, uh, David, you. it's a competition because uh, everyone is competing for for communication space. You know, it's not the only topics that get communicated, and everyone has become a lot more savvy. You know, a lot they're used to sophisticated communications. You know, inside and outside of work, so we're always having to sort of drive and look for different ways of interacting with people in different ways and to get uh, information out there. Yeah, we're incredibly lucky that it's Siemens that we have, you know, platforms and technologies that that really help us do that. Uh, we have analytics that let us know 
what works and what's not working. And this is really helpful. So it's it's always something that we're looking at and trying to improve all the time and always really, really happy when it's successful. Absolutely. You're you're a key part of that success. Let's ask, you know, as we as we go into the final segment here of this podcast, I, I like to ask our guests, if you were if you were addressing, if you were sitting up on a stage at a podium or in a room with new team members or with customers, why would you tell them that Siemens is a great place to work? Well, it's not only an incredible place to work, David, it's an incredible place to learn. Having room to experiment and see your ideas come to life is really rewarding and really fulfilling, especially when it impacts the health and safety of our people. So I get I get a great deal of purpose out of my role and um, and the fact that I get to learn and see my ideas come to to life is really fantastic. But it's also a very supportive environment. I can honestly say, David, that in all the years of my career, since I had my first weekend job when I was 15 years old, that Siemens has offered the most supportive environment, not only from my own team, but with all the other people I collaborate and interact with globally. It feels more like a family than a workplace. I know that sounds cheesy, but I really do feel like people care about each other. They really do care care about each other here. That's something I've never experienced to this extent in in any other workplace. And and I've worked in a lot of places. Now that that's that is awesome. You know this th- this show came to an end too quick because I I love visiting with you and I could talk to you for hours. Thank you, thank you so much, Jeff. Thank you for taking the time out of your day and joining us for this show. My pleasure, David. What a great show! One of, one of my favorite people in the world to talk to. So. Folks, you've been listening to the UHS Radio Show on Siemens FM. Please take the time invite your friends to subscribe to the show as you already have and do not hesitate to provide feedback if you have any questions or comments to david.w.walker at siemens.com be kind to everyone be safe